So at the beginning of the year, so I just want to do a series on Ephesians. Um, and Ephesians is an amazing letter that Paul, the apostle, wrote. And you'll find it in um, the new section of your Bible. And, um, and it's, uh, even though it's, it was written in about 60 AD, um, and Paul was in prison. One of his first, uh, he wasn't visiting prison, he was actually locked up. And, um, and uh, he was uh, in prison. And, uh, and he wrote this letter to uh, the church at Ephesus. And, um, and so we're going to have a wee look at that this morning, and that'll be fun. And uh, these are called the prison letters. And, um, and, and in fact, he's written a number of letters, but we just want to concentrate on these in particular. Um, and so is that cool? So uh, your homework, should you, should you want, is just, just live in Ephesians in the next few weeks and just see what the Holy Spirit's going to say to you about that. It's broken into a couple of parts. So the first you know, sort of three chapters are, are really establishing who we are in Christ. And that's really good to discover that because when I send people out to, to lay hands on the sick, they need to know that they're full of the Holy Ghost and power. Yeah. Amen? Because it's really good to know that you've got something to give to someone. Yes? It's like, you know, you get into that place and uh, you, you, you want to be the Sea of Galilee. You know, the River Jordan runs through it and it gives life and there is life. But the River Jordan carries on to a place called the Dead Sea, which never has any outlet. And, uh, and so, you know, if, you, if you're just receiving, receiving, receiving all the time and you don't do anything with that, then, uh, then you, you're just going to stagnate. It's going to be the Dead Sea for you. It's going to be a dead experience. Oh, my Christianity is so boring and it's so dead. Well, you just give out. Just give something out. You know, just like give it away. And, and the moment you begin to do that, you know, something begins to happen because God begins to pour in again into your life. And Paul writes uh, in the book of Ephesians, and he, he's an incredible encourager when you read this. Now, I'm going to read you the first chapter in a moment and because uh, I, I don't trust you to read it at home by yourself. Well, pastor, the dog ate my homework, you know, like all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to read it out and we'll have a, you know, have a look at it. And I'm going to read it out of um, uh, the, uh, the, the New Living Translation. It's a guy, I love it. It's a very readable translation. I, I don't care what you read it in, you know, just, just read it in the Bible, whatever you've got. And uh, it's going to be great. And then the last part of Ephesians, the last three chapters, which we'll look at in a few weeks, are incredibly practical. Um, and they're practical around family, they're practical around relationship, they're practical around marriage, practical around spiritual warfare, all of those kind of things, and it's just great. But it, we've got to know who we are in Christ first. Amen. So, Father, this morning we want to say thank you for this amazing book written from a prison. And so, Lord, we just say thank you for it. Uh, we, we thank you that you're, you, you've breathed on this word. We thank you that, Lord, it's a living word. Uh, even though it is written in our Bibles, Holy Spirit, I pray today that it would become active. It would become sharp in our lives. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Here we go, Ephesians. So it starts off in, in chapter 1, and that's all we'll, we'll have a look at. In fact, only part of it today. But um, uh, chapter 1 says, This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ. Do you know that you're chosen? If you don't know that, then, then I want you to just be aware of that, that all of you who are here today are chosen and, and, you know, that, that even when we were dedicating, you know, little Sophie this morning, I had that distinct impression that, that, that as that psalm spoke out, it says, you know, even in my mother's womb, where I, no one saw me, I was formed uh, even before my days. And, um, you know, God looks down through, he's not locked into time. God's not locked into time. If this were time, this, is, this, this would be time, and this whole room is eternity, and even that is so limited because of the walls, but we're locked into time. We're locked into a, to a container of time. We live and we die. You know, it's like Ian Wright, born in 1953, uh, Dash, uh, died in... Anybody got a date? <laughs> We see, those, we see those tombstones, you know, out there. And um, um, there's Sam Cusack. Remember Sam Cusack? I love his grave. It's a Perspex grave out at the... Um, if you knew Sam in any way, shape or form, you would know this because on his gravestone uh, it says, um, more colourful than a jar of jelly beans. <laughs> and I thought that was just great. It's a Perspex tombstone. You can see right through it. And that was Sam as well. He was an amazing old guy who used to... Um, Dressed pretty uh, awkwardly, and um, and um, <laughs> and it's like I don't know what's on your gravestone. You know, like I said to Dale, you know, what, what he said, what, we were talking about gravestones one day and what we would put on them. You know, and Dale likes promoted to glory. So, 
Oh, graduated to glory. Graduated to glory. Gra- just graduated. Sorry. Don't, you, don't want to, you don't want to be going to glory? You just want to be graduated. I'll put that on your two. <laughs> I told Dale all I want on mine is I told you I was sick. <laughs> but Paul was called. You and I are called. Amen. We're called to this, to this great life we have in the Spirit. And Paul writes about this. He goes, he's chosen by God, by the will of God. You know, God's willing. He is so willing. I love that. I'm going to get stuck on this if I don't move off it. He is just so willing that, that we are, there are going to be people who are, are going, to be, uh, going to be in the kingdom and extend the kingdom. We are kingdom extenders. It's so awesome. And, and, and he said, I'm writing this now to God's holy people. Uh, and it says in Ephesus, but I want to say in Invercargill as well. Come on. It's writing to God's holy people everywhere who are faithful followers of Jesus Christ. You know, and that's always a great encouragement for us. Come on, let's be faithful followers uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And may God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. That's an entrance and a finish right there. Then it goes like this. It says, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Who is that? What? We are chosen way before time to be holy and without fault in God's eyes. I want you to think about that for a moment. If you were able to erase right now on the whiteboard of your life or the blackboard of your life as it used to be in my day and just go everything like I, I just want that eradicated I don't every time I look at my life I have a regret about that I, I, I'm, I, I just wish that had never happened you know, there, everybody in the room would put their hand up even if you're paralyzed you know you're just like come on there are the regrets that all of us have but God has wiped the slate clean he's wiped it clean wiped it clean and from the beginning of time that was his intention the blood of Jesus Christ the cross of Jesus Christ this letter that Paul is writing he goes come on even before he made the world God loves us and he chose us to be holy and without fault in his eyes God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family and by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus man I, I you know you think about that it's really interesting this morning. Can I, can you have, can I have my phone for a wee minute, uh, Dale? Um, and I, I sent a text out to a whole bunch of leaders. And, um, and this morning, uh, I, I sent that um, out to, um, also out to uh, our great friend, Plaster Clark Taylor. And um, it was so funny because I got this text back from him. And um, Clark, I, I sent it out to about 140 people. But he thinks, don't tell him this, he thinks he's the only one that gets it. And... Um, <laughs> And, and so, you know, I, 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 I just sort of, you know, shared, you know, a, a word and he goes, Hi, from Mount Alfred, it's 6 a.m. here and I am preparing. Your text interrupted my preparations for the Olympics. <laughs> the starting gun had just gone off and, and I had my adrenaline under control, nerves settled, focused, razor sharp and had started running on this incredible race when my phone pinged. My focus was broken, and now I can't even see the other runners, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. I'm preparing a message on, it's the starting point, and that is the start, your, uh, that is to start your praying at the starting point. That is a reminder of your soul. It's a reminder that I am a son of God. I, would, I think that I would have run the race too. Maybe I should change the heading to the cost of distraction. Love you both, um, Clark and Anne. So isn't that lovely? He just like, there we go. Thanks, honey. The, um, it's amazing. You know, you just, just some of those things. We are, we are sons and daughters of the living God. We, we, here's Paul reminding the church he's adopted. God has adopted us into his family. We're, we're not slaves. We're not servants. We're sons and daughters. Remember when the prodigal son came home? You know, one of the first things that his father did was give him a new pair of shoes because slaves always were barefooted. Slaves didn't wear shoes. Sons wear shoes. 
And when God adopts us into his family, he gives us, and we'll read about this at the end of Ephesians, he gives us the battle boots of the armor. He, he clothes us. He, he makes sure that we are well equipped uh, for what we've got in our lives. And he adopts us into his own family. And this is what he wanted to do. So um, I'm heading towards verse 6 now. <laughs> I just wanted to read this quickly and then start something, but anyway, it's quite exciting, isn't it? It's like, this is really cool. I read it out loud to myself this morning and go, I'm going to, I love this. This is so good. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us, who belongs to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and he forgave our sins. He showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. And God has revealed to us his mysterious plan regarding Christ. I stopped in my office this morning, went, his mysterious plan. I loved it in this version. And he says, a plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. And I kept on asking myself, I wonder what that plan is. And, and, and then in verse 10 it says, and this is the plan. I thought, that's quite a quick answer to prayer. And, uh, and this is the plan at the right time. He will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. And furthermore, because we are united with Jesus, we have received an inheritance from God. Who's got an inheritance? Come on. Wow. It's, it's great to have an inheritance. In the natural, it's great. But I tell you what, in the supernatural, it's phenomenal. What kind of inheritance have we got? What do we carry? What kind of weight? What kind of, what kind of authority? Remember, not only did the, the prodigal son get shoes on his feet, he got a ring on his finger, and that ring sealed his father's authority. He could act in his father's name. He could, he could say, in my father's name, I place my, my ring uh, on that seal, and it is done as if my father said it. That's the authority that you and I have got. When we pray for the sick, we pray with the authority of adopted sons and daughters, not slaves, but adopted into the family. The same power. I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, goodness, I just love it. This is so good. This is so good. If you don't get anything from this, please feel free to voyeur on my journey because I think this is amazing. I really do. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we received that inheritance. He chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plan. He makes everything work out according to his plan. He makes everything work out according to his plan. Come on. He makes everything work out. Even when you think it's like, this is not working. He makes it work out according to his plan. And the, the, we just have to make the shift. We just have to get off our own plan sometimes. And we have to just move and go, God, um, I think I need a hand here. It's like Dale when our kids were little with the fishing lines. You know, they'd go fishing down at the Otaki River mouth. And, and I don't know whether they were just trying to deliberately do it, but they all used to cast at the same time. All their strings used to get, all their lines used to get. You know, it was, it was terrible. And Dale used to have the gift of patience. I used to, I mean, she still does. And, um, and she would just undo all those lines and all that thing. And God just does all of that for us. He's, his whole, whole plan, he works everything out according to his plan, not to our dilemma. God's purpose was that we Jews. Do we have any Jews in the house this morning? Go, Chloe. Anybody else that we Jews? So we're preaching to a bunch of Gentiles this morning. Sorry about that, honey. But, you know, like, it's like, here we go. God's purpose was that we Jews would be the first to trust in Christ. I love it. My life scripture says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it's the power of God under salvation to all who believe Jews first. Yeah. <laughs> then the Gentiles. Then the Greeks. All of those kind of things. I love it. I think maybe we just need to just, you know, oh, it's a whole different rabbit trail. And um, God's purpose is that we Jews were the first to trust in Christ. It would bring praise and glory to God. When we trust in him, we bring praise and we bring glory to God. There is something unique about that. And now you Gentiles, that's the rest of us, here we go, have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit who he promised long ago. And that spirit is God's guarantee, his signet ring seal. 
that He will give us the inheritance that He promised, and that He has purchased us to be His own people. And He did this so we would praise and glory. So He did this so that we would praise and we would glorify Him. When did your neighbor last praise and glorify Him because of the unique relationship they have? Just they better not check it out with them, just in case they haven't been doing any of that. But that's why we that's why we worship. That, that's why, we, why, why at times when we begin to get the band up and we get the music team going and all of that, we just provide a platform for us to go, God, you are awesome. The, the things that you've done in your life. I, I, but, you know, many times in the Bible says, you know, lift up the hands that hang down, lift up the voice now still, because it's an encouragement that as we walk through life, as we have that weird hat on, as we have all of those things happening to us that Christine said this morning, some of those things just need to be divested off our life so that we can praise again, so that we can lift up our voice again, because there's power in our voice. Don't pray in your heads. That's what I was saying before, because many times it gets messed up with everything else that's going on there and we're people that should excuse me I'm starting to spit on people it's terrible I can see it from my perspective it's all <laughs> just let us spray and um, we, we, we just can't lock it into our heads you know sometimes I give you such a hard time about come on come on just just shout something out is that to make me feel good no 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 it's never to make me feel good it's to get agreement in your life there is, it's to get agreement in, in the power of our words. There is, there is power in our voice. That's why we go to rugby matches and go, was that a goal? No, there's mad people, drunk people, screaming all around you. You know, wouldn't that be great to have a few mad, screaming, drunk people in church? I went past the pub, I was at the one on the North Road by the Avenue the other night, and I was on my way to church last Sunday night, and it was full of people, and I went, oh, how did that happen? You know, like, you know, all I'd need to do is, is, is serve spirits. <laughs> so I know a pastor, or I knew a pastor in, the, in, in England, and, um, and he was so discouraged with pastoring, he got up and he ran a pub. And he said, I love it. He said, I'm still pastoring all these people that come in, and he said, it's not like church. At the end, I have to kick them out. <laughs> he said, it's crazy. He said, my, my old church, he said, they used to, they used to finish they out the door, probably to the pub. But he said, you know, <laughs> <laughs> these men are not drunk like you think they're drunk on the day of Pentecost. Winky Prattney says they were drunk all, night, all right, but they weren't drunk like we thought they were drunk. And so when we begin to allow the Holy Spirit, that guarantee in our life, to fill us and overflow us, and, and Paul's writing from prison, he says, come on, I might be in prison, but you don't have to be. You, we, I, Jesus come to break every chain and to liberate us in that particular way. And sometimes we just need to drink again of the Holy Spirit, the new wine of his presence. And, 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 and part of that, part of when he gets into us, we can't help but tell. We can't help like Christine but testify. We can't help but shout out. We can't help because there's an overflow that gets in our life. And I've been in those meetings. I've been in those football matches. I've been in those pubs. I've been in that when someone gets a song up and you know some, the band's starts playing in the corner and everybody thinks they're a singer. Remember that? Some of you don't get out a lot. <laughs> then it goes on in here in Paul's in verse 15. It says, ever since I heard about your, uh, about your strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thinking about thanking God for you. And, and this glorious and the, and the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ to give you spiritual wisdom and insight uh, that you might grow in your knowledge of God. And I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light and, and so that you can understand the confident hope that he has given to those who he has called, his holy people who are rich and glorious inheritance. I pray that the eyes of your heart might be enlightened. I need to stop there for a bit because I just want to show you a couple of things and then we're going to quit. 
The Ephesians 2 says this, and this is the verse that hangs around Ephesians. Because, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. And we've read part of that already, but this is, this is, that was in chapter 1. This is in chapter 2. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and by raised us up together and made us sit together. And do you, do you see the similarities to this? This happened to Jesus. He was in the grave. He was put in the grave. He arose again. He is seated now with God in heavenly places. But he's saying, no, 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 this is us now. He, he, with this great love that he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, when you and I were beyond hope, when the, when the, when the writing, the handwriting, as Hebrew says, was against us. He says, when all of that uh, was, it was against us, he made us alive together in Christ. Anybody been made alive? Anybody got, everybody been plugged into the mains of heaven, been made alive? I've drunk a little bit of the new wine, you know, kind of like, whoa, here we go. You know, don't let that religious spirit calm you down. Come on, don't let it calm you down, man. That thing will calm you down at 100 miles an hour. You need to break it out a little bit, get that hat off your head and begin to just have a great time. Oh, I'm getting ex- oh. He made us alive together with Christ. By Christ you have been saved. And he raised us up together. I love it when you get raised up. I love it when you get raised up. Man, I love it when the musos just go off the reservation sometimes. I command you to go off the reservation more. Just like get off there and, and everybody gets a little dance on. You know what I'm talking about? Everybody gets a little bit excited, you know, because cause we've just gone away. Because there's something in us that just wants to be freer than we've ever been before. And so God raised us up together. He made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. By grace you have been saved through faith. That's not of yourself. It's not of works, lest we start boasting about it. And that is the nub, if you like, of us being able to understand Ephesians, because we have got to be born again. If you have not been raised from the dead yet, <laughs> don't wait until you're dead, because I will not go out and visit you with Sam Cusack. You've got to be live first. If you're going to be dead, let them bury live bodies. Oh, that'll mess with you right now. But anyway, that's okay. I'm going to move on. Otherwise, I'm going to do something else. And then we, then we looked at this, this whole redemption thing in Christ and all of this. We, we've read this. We're back into, into chapter 1 now in verse 3. And it says, see this? See in Christ, I put in him and accept all of this. He said, blessed be the God, Father of our Lord Jesus. God and Father, not God, Father. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We have blessings in heavenly places. We have blessings in heavenly places. Come on. I'm going to go back to that in just a minute, and then we're going to close. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. We talked about that. Having been predestined us to be adopted as sons by, by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise uh, of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. If you have a rejection problem this morning, I want you to read that last line. Because he has accepted you in him. That'll kill every devil of, of rejection. And even though at times we feel so prickly and we get around people and we go, Ooh, you know, they're going to look at me funny uh, or it's going to be awful and that. No, 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 no. Come on. We need to clothe ourselves with the garments of salvation. Not the garments of rejection. Not the you know. Lift up a song of praise. Lift up that praise. Lift up the hands that hang still. Lift up the voice now still. He has given us a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. If you've got a spirit of heaviness on you, I tell you what, praise will kill it every time. But I like my heaviness. We don't like it. Your family doesn't like it. And truth be told, you don't like it. But we get stuck many times in all of that. Misery loves company. You can just see a clump of them together. (laughs) You do, exactly. Holy moly. And then it goes back and says, He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Heavenly places. Wow. 
You know, we get so looking down on the ground. We get so involved in our families and in, in our work and in our life and getting up in the morning. It's like Groundhog Day for many of us. And yet God has placed us in heavenly places. And so we times we've got to lift our vision. Come on, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Lift up your vision again. Begin to lift it up. How do you do that? You lift it up in praise. I want the musos to get ready. You lift it up in praise. You lift it up and you get a different vision. You begin to read some of these scriptures out loud, not in your mind. Because faith comes by Hearing and hearing by the word of God. And, and you know, it's interesting that when we understand that there are heavenly places, and I've been praying this, you know, you can see beyond sight and you can hear beyond hearing. Look at this scripture here. It just, um, it, it, this is in a realm of conflict here. And this is back in 2 Kings. And so the, the servant of the man of God, this is Elijah, the servant of the man of God went up and he got out early the next morning. An army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. And he goes in and he says, oh my Lord, what are we going to do? The servant asked, anybody, anybody ever been there? Oh my God, what are we going to do? This is like, it's like, you know, my hair is on fire. It's like the, the bills aren't being paid. The kids have run off with the, you know, I don't know, just disaster. What are we going to do? And you know, this is the, there's this whole army there. They're going, to get, they're going to get taken out. And the prophet says, don't be afraid. Those who are with us, who are, there, there are more than those, those. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. There are more for you than those who are against you. There are more for you, come on, than those who are against you. You've got to know. If we, if we, how do we know that? Because we've got to lift our vision high. And then this is a key. This is a real key one here. And Elijah prayed this. Elisha, excuse me, prayed this. He said, Lord, open his eyes that he might see. And we're going to finish with this today. Because I believe, you know, as Ephesians talks about this too. Come on, open the eyes of your heart. Not just open the eyes in your head. Anybody can see. Anybody can have a religious view. I'm talking about a review, a view of a relationship in Christ. Open the eyes of your heart. Here it is. Open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes. And he looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots and fire all about Elisha. You know, people say, well, that's, Ian, that's just like Old Testament. And they had angels and they had weird things happening and all of that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. Paul encouraged the early church. Come on, open the eyes of your heart. What else did he say? He said this in 2 Corinthians. He said, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. I can see that. I can see it. I can, I can, I can look at it. I can touch it. And think, but there is a realm that is way more real than any of that. That is a membrane away from us. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. This is temporary. The seat you're sitting on is temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. What do you see? What do you see? What is it that, that, that we see? What is it that we are entering into? And I believe that as we look at this whole, excuse me, let's go back here. As we, as we look into this, no, no, kill that now. Otherwise, I'll just go on to a, something entirely different again. So full of Ephesians right now. It's bubbling out of me. I was going to do that verse by verse this morning, um, and I had a other, another whole bunch of things, but I tell you what, there is something here in this atmosphere this morning that you and I have to respond to. Who's going to be the guide for us? Who is going to, be, who, who is going to, open, who is going to allow uh, the Lord to open their eyes afresh this morning? Because it, you, you'll, step, you'll step into something that you've never been in before. You can live in cessationalism. I was brought up in it. It killed me for years. And it's a doctrine of the devil. Did I say that out loud? I, I believe that. I got so stirred by that this week. That causes people not to pray for the sick. It causes people not to pray and cast out demons. It causes people not to share the gospel. It, it causes people to be shut down in religion. I tell you this, 
God is calling His people in this hour. That churches are rising up, some are fading away and others are rising up. There is a move of God around the world, but we've got to have our eyes open, our spiritual eyes. We've got to understand who we are in Christ, that God has given us the shoes of sonship or daughtership. It's generic. All right? He's given us a robe of righteousness. He's put something around. He's clothed our nakedness. That which we think people can see, God says, I'll cover you. Isn't He so good? Wow! And then he gives us a, a ring of ownership, of, of, of sonship. He said, in my name, you can sign documents. In my name, you will cast out devils. In my name, you will heal the sick. In my name, you will raise the dead. The things that I do, Jesus said, you will do greater. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I, I'm not doing any of that at the moment. But I'm telling you what, I'm going, God, I'm going to be into that. I'm into that. I'm into that. I'm into that. Come on, I want you to stand this morning. Some of you, you know, your eyes have just been, oh, I don't know what he's talking about. That's because that hat is still on your head. That hat of someone else's government. And right now, in Jesus' name, I break that thing off in Jesus. If you want it off, it'll come off. If you sit there going, make it go off, it'll never go off. It's when we begin to cooperate with the Holy Ghost. It's when we begin to walk with Him, when we begin to abide in Him. I tell you what, those things begin to cloak us again and fill us anew in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, team, do something. Make it loud. If you need to come and have someone pray for you this morning, if you need to give your heart to Jesus, I want you to get out of your seat. I want you to come at the front and let's have a place of encounter down here this morning and see what God will do. Lord, open our eyes that we might see that there are more for us than those who are against us. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Open our eyes. Open our eyes. Know what it is to be a son. Know what it is to be a daughter. Know what it is to have shoes. Know what it is to have a garment of righteousness. Know what it is to say in the name of Jesus Christ, I am saved. Come on.